big tornado. Good morning. It is very early. Today's March 13th, first real storm chase of the year. And um, the threat today is in Northeast Kansas. I'm in Des Moines, Iowa right now, heading down to probably like Topeka area. Enhanced risk from the Storm Prediction Center for supercells on a warm front in Northeast Kansas. The question is gonna be, can they form before sunset so that I can see them? And can they cross that warm front and root as a surface-based supercell and possibly produce tornadoes? If they just pass the front, they're just gonna be pretty uninteresting and it's gonna be uh, not a very exciting chase, but we gotta be there, we gotta find out. On March 13th, 2024, I set out for my first real storm chase of the season. The atmospheric setup was classic for severe weather, but uniquely challenging given the time of year. Severe storms require several key features to form, but the main ones are wind shear, moisture, instability, and lift. A strong jet stream was forecast to eject into the plain states during the afternoon hours, providing lift for our storms. In fact, if you showed a storm chaser this map, they'd probably think an outbreak was on the way. But it's March, very early in the season for severe weather in the plains. Moisture and instability can often be hard to come by this time of year, and this event was no different. Even on the morning of, it was unclear whether or not moisture would make it in time to support severe storms. By the afternoon though, things were looking up, and it wasn't just because I had stopped to get a coffee. Surface analysis showed the development of a warm front in northeast Kansas, which had already become my target for the day. Winds aloft were out of the southwest, and winds closer to the ground were out of the southeast with ample moisture. This meant that any storms that formed would quickly begin to rotate due to the wind shear in place. Southwest of Kansas City right now, driving uh a little bit south of Overbrook on 56 West. Skies look good. The warm front is just off to the right. And to the left we have uh, some cumulus clouds, some clearing skies. Probably not initiating just yet, but uh, looks pretty good to me. Now we just gotta wait. I mean, we're waiting for the moisture to come in. You can kind of see the edge of the dry air up here. That's the dry line way out in the distance, but. Uh, up here near us and over us is the moisture and we're trying to inject some more moisture in here and hopefully things will pop off soon. Gonna go uh, set up a little bit further west of here and, and wait her out. At 6 o'clock p.m., the Storm Prediction Center issued a mesoscale discussion, highlighting the target area and mentioning the potential for supercells capable of hail, strong winds, and tornadoes. Shortly thereafter, they issued a tornado watch. Everything was in place. Now it was time to wait for storms to form. Uh, we are west of, or east of Council Grove. Right now we have two towers going up, two storms. A little skinny right now, but they are getting ready. They're getting ready to go. Uh, looks like these are our first attempts at initiation. So a lot going on here. We're going to let this sort itself out and keep going towards them. And uh, It's showtime. Let's do it. As lift from the jet stream spread over the region, the first attempt at storm initiation began. But there was a strong cap in place, a layer of warm air a few thousand feet above our heads that was preventing the development of weaker storms. Well, they're trying, but so far they have not burst through the cap. Let's see what happens here. We needed a big, strong updraft to push through that cap and help form a stronger storm. And that's exactly what happened. Well, we are northeast of a developing supercell, which is taking its time. Little uh, precipitation in there, you can see in the center of the screen. Um, but it needs to organize itself. There's a couple bases. You see these individual flat areas of clouds. So I'm gonna give it some time to get itself together here, see what happens. When several strong updrafts form, it can sometimes take a moment for them to organize. But eventually, the wind shear in place helps to organize them into one dominant updraft that rotates, a supercell. 
As these storms started to congeal, it became obvious that a strong supercell was forming, and it was time to reposition. I forgot about one thing. Hail. Well, I got some hail. At this point, it became clear that a dominant supercell was developing, and inflow was increasing. So I decided to get out ahead of the storm to get a view of the mesocyclone and any possible tornado that would develop. With rotation increasing on radar and inflow increasing at the surface, I decided to reposition again to see the tornado. At this point, I was in prime position, ahead of the storm with an amazing view into the mesocyclone. There was nothing else left to do but to sit and watch the spectacle unfold. Wow. I heard a tornado. <laughs> Big tornado. At this point, I started to lose light and the ability to stay with the storm on decent roads. So I decided to back off and shoot a little bit of lightning as I bid the storm goodbye. Eventually, the National Weather Service would find that the tornado had winds of 115 miles per hour. It was on the ground for 8.8 .8 miles, and its maximum width was 400 yards. The tornado lasted about 30 minutes, and it received a rating of EF2. Unfortunately, this tornado also damaged properties while it was on the ground. As much as we love storm chasing, we hate to see property damaged, people injured, or even worse, killed. It was a somber moment when the damage became apparent at the end of this chase. Still, this was an amazing day. From analyzing the setup and observations at a coffee shop, to driving, 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 and driving some more, finally intercepting this beautiful supercell and incredible tornado made it all worth it. And that's what I think storm chasing is all about, isn't it? These moments, moments on the road, moments with friends and colleagues, moments spent watching some of the most powerful yet beautiful forces that nature has to offer. So cheers to more of these moments. I'll see you on the road soon.